In this video, we go over the three basic programming constructs, sequence, iteration, and branching. It's important you've got a solid understanding of the basic programming concepts and different data types before you watch these videos. We covered those in SLR playlist eight and 13. Although you could learn the theory independently, it makes much more sense if you're able to work through these videos and their examples by implementing their concepts in real program code. These videos are therefore designed to reinforce and consolidate the understanding of programming techniques you will need for the exam, rather than teach you these concepts from scratch. Remember, the way to become a good programmer is by programming, little and often. You don't become a good programmer, simply by watching videos and studying theory. In order to explain the three basic programming constructs, we're going to be examining the code shown here for a simple Python program called Beat That Dice. So the first of the three programming constructs and the most simple and straightforward is sequence. And sequence literally means executing one instruction after another. And by default, if your program isn't doing selection or iteration or anything else special, it is always working in sequence. That's simply executing one line and then moving on and executing the next line and then the next and so on. If programs could only operate using sequence though, they wouldn't be very intelligent. Branching is a construct that allows the program end up going in a number of various directions, depending on the outcome of a condition. So the first typical selection construct you learn about is typically the if statement. So here we can see if dice one is greater than dice two, then we execute the first line of code. Otherwise, or we say else, execute this line of code. And this is quite typical and something by now you'll probably be quite used to. So here we can see at the bottom, if user input equals roll value, print, you worked it out correctly. Otherwise, print, no, the value of the roll is something else. So this is really common and is the first typical selection or branching statement you learn. The final programming construct is iteration, often known as looping. And this is where we get to repeat sections of code. There are several ways of doing this. A popular one is the for loop and a for loop is known as a counter controlled loop. And we use this when the number of iterations needed is known ahead of the iteration executing. So for example, here we're saying for roles in range roles per player. And if roles per player was nine, it would be for roles in range nine. So we know the number of times we want to execute or iterate, repeat this code. You also need to be aware of a second type of iteration or looping construct known as a condition controlled loop. And in Python, this is supported with while loops. While loops are used when the number of iterations is not known because the variable used to determine when the iteration ends is changing within the iteration itself. So previously, for example, with a for loop, we would say for one to 10, a fixed number of times. With a while loop, as an example here, we've got a condition while answer is not equal to computer. And there's a single line of code that says answer equals input, what is the password? And this line of code would keep being displayed to the user. We would keep repeating it in the while loop, asking them again and again to enter their password until they entered the string computer. So this is a condition controlled loop that only exits when the condition is matched. It's also perfectly acceptable for you to nest programming constructs inside one another. And you can achieve this with both iteration and selection, and indeed a mix of both. So here on the left, we see a for loop nested inside a while loop. And of course, you can easily spot the nesting in Python because we use the indentation. So here we say while solved is not equal to true, 
run an instruction and then enter an inner nested for loop for one to five times. Those instructions will be run five times. We then run one more instruction in the outer while loop and then continue back round again. Likewise on the right, we have an if statement nested inside an if statement. So we say if the game one variable equals true, then run an instruction and then run another if statement nested inside. And if score is greater than high score, then we execute the line of code underneath. We then break out to the outer if, if statement and run one more line of instruction code. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. What are the three major programming constructs? And in what situations will you use each type of construct?